In this lab, we try to find covered interest arbitrage in the real world. So first thing we do is we're going to log into Bloomberg. To find Bloomberg in the trading room, go to one of the computers that have the white Bloomberg keyboards. Find the desktop, desktop icon for Bloomberg, double click, and then click on the connect button. You'll then be directed to create a logon. Once you're in Bloomberg, you can either use the FPF keys, the special function keys, and find, say, currency go, and then once you're in there, look for dashboard or other types of functions. Or I'll give you some of the hints to try to find some of the uh, more popular areas. So once you're in Bloomberg, if you come up to the top of the screen, say up here, you can type in XDSH and hit enter, and then you'll find a dashboard for currencies and you can see if you do this drop down menu you can click on major currencies and then slide this bar across you'll find all the major currencies here is the US dollar price of the euro spot market and then the one year forward pips and so far you can also see say the Canadian dollar price of the US dollar spot market which is says, says right here spot or the one year forward pips. So you can see that both the euro is selling at a forward premium since I need to add some pips. This is a Canadian dollar price of a dollar. So it looks like the dollar against the Canadian selling at a premium. So the Canadian must be selling at a discount. Now, if you actually know a currency code, say the EURUSD, you could just come up here and type US, U -O -U -E -U -R -U -S -D. and then what you'll see, as soon as you type that, you'll see a drop-down menu or uh, some hints trying to help you, and you can find some currency functions that way. So just by typing something up here, whether it be currency or currency dashboard or a code or a stock symbol, you'll start to see some functions uh, show up that you can choose. So I downloaded the data from the currency dashboard and you can see it right here. So here again is the dollar price of the euro, dollar price of the Aussie. And we're, this is, these are the exchange rates we're going to use for the little exercise we're going to do. Now we're going to do a covered interest arbitrage, seeing that if we can make money uh, borrowing in the U.S. at low interest rates and investing in Australia, which happen to have high interest rates, so the first thing I'm going to look for are interest rates in the U.S. and Australia. All right, I could go to Government Go from my Bloomberg uh, keyboard and then look for global yield curves, or I can type in IYC1 and then hit Go. And then I'll select my country, say the United States, and then I'll select Sovereign Yield Curve. So I, I first went into IYC1, which is this right here. I clicked on United States and then I clicked on US Sovereign and I got this US on off the run sovereign. Uh, on, on, on off the run is a technical term uh, relates to what the treasuries are on or off the run. Uh, you can Google that to see what that means, but uh, this is the yield curve that we're going to use. All right, down here, list the one year rate. Or I could also click on the curve and look across and see the one year rate. So here is my yield curve for the US. Then I backed up a little bit on that menu and I chose the Australian dollar and got the yield curve. So here is the yield curve for the Australian dollar. Here is the one year, which is also listed down here. Then I'm looking for borrowing costs. So uh, remember that LIBOR is an index of borrowing costs. It's a lender, London interbank offer rate. So I typed in LIBOR in my Bloomberg terminal up here, and it told me to go to uh, the world swap matrix, which is also WSN Go, not WSM Go, which you would think it would be. And then I selected the one year maturity, and I can see the one year US LIBOR is 56.73 basis points. And I can see the Australian one year is 
So here's all the information I need to do covered interest arbitrage in, arbitrage in Australia. The spot price for the Australian dollar is 88.40 bid, 88.41 ask, with one year pips of negative 225.97 bid, negative 224.03 ask. Sovereign rates in the U.S. are 7.2 basis points. Sovereign rates in Australia for one year maturity is 2.5563%. LIBOR rates in the U.S. are 56 basis points, Australia 269 basis points. So the strategy I want to try to use is I'm going to start with $1,000 borrowing at U.S. interest rates, LIBOR rates. Then I'm going to buy the Aussie in the spot market, buy the Australian bond. Then when the bond comes due, I'm then going to sell those Australian bond proceeds forward to get back to dollars. So then I'm going to use the forward market. So here's my cost of the strategy. I'm going to borrow $1,000 at U.S. LIBOR and pay back $1,005. I'm then going to take my $1,000 today that I just borrowed. I'm going to buy Aussies in the spot market. So to go from dollars to Aussies, I need the Aussie per dollar exchange rate. So these cancel out. The Aussie per dollar, and I need the low Aussie per dollar exchange rate. So the question is, how many Aussies will I get? If I sell $1,000 today, the low Aussie per dollar exchange rate is 1 over the high Aussie per dollar, dollar per Aussie exchange rate, which is 88.41. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take that amount of Australian dollars. I'm then going to invest it as the, at the Australian sovereign rate. And I'll get an amount of Aussies next year. Since this is the amount of Aussies I'll get one year from now, I'm then going to sell that amount of Aussies using the forward rate, which the pips are listed right here. And again, I'm at this point, I'm going to get a lower amount than I would like to, because at this point I'm selling Australian buying dollars, and I'll get less on dollars than I'd like. So to go from Australian to dollar, I'm going to need the dollar per Australian forward rate, the low one, which is going to be 88.41 minus 2.2597 pips. So 88400. Again, the, the low dollar per Aussie is going to be on the bid side. Minus 225 pips. which will give me the 86.1403. So that leaves me with $99.23. Subtracting my financing cost, I lose $6 on this trade, so there's no arbitrage. So here's your lab assignment. Now this lab assignment, you should be able to do all four of these problems, and they'll be due next week, next Friday, in groups of three to five people. And I'd like to uh, have you do it on about one or two pages, probably two pages, handwritten. And the handwritten solutions will look a lot like these solutions. So there'll be four solutions that look similar to this. This one is borrowing dollars. If you're borrowing a foreign currency, it would look a little bit different. But I like to see it like this to show you, see all the exchange rates you used when you flipped them, how you added the pips, and so on. So here's the uh, assignment. Calculate the covered interest arbitrage from borrowing uh, 1 million yen at the yen LIBOR rate for one year and enter into a forward contract to pay off the loan in dollars. And then you're going to buy the dollars with the yen you just borrowed. Since that purchase happens today, use the spot price. And then you're going to buy a one-year sovereign bond, and that's going to give you US, uh, U.S. dollar proceeds. Second assignment, borrow $100,000 at U.S. LIBOR, buy yen at the spot, buy a one-year bond. That'll give me yen next year. Then I'll need to sell the yen forward at the forward price and get back to dollars. The third problem, calculate covered interest arbitrage in Greece. I'm going to borrow $100,000, buy the euro, buy a Greek bond, buy a Greek CDS to guarantee the payment of the Greek bond, and then sell the euro forward. 
And number four, borrow $100,000 at U.S. LIBOR, buy the ruble, buy a Russian sovereign bond, buy a Russian CDS, and sell the ruble forward. Now, to do all those problems, I have all the data you need. So here is your Russian CDS rate, which is, looks like 209 basis points, so 2.09%. Here is your Greek, 4.75%, 475 basis points. Here are your interest rates, the one-year rate in Japan, Greece, and Russia. Those are sovereign rates. And here is the ruble spot and forward. So the spot market is 40.1 bid, 40.1118 ask. And here's the one year forward, 43. Now, I also have given an extra credit assignment. All right, so for all these assignments, you have all the data in this PowerPoint. For this one, you are going to need to go to Bloomberg. All right, I want you to do this, uh, say that's 10 minutes sitting, gather all the interest rates you need. So here's the assignment, borrow 1 million yen at the yen swap or LIBOR rate. Enter a forward contract to pay it off in dollars. So I'm going to need the yen LIBOR for one year, and I'll need the forward price of the dollar yen to pay off the loan. You're then going to take your yen and buy ruble. Now to go from yen to ruble, you're probably going to need to get the ruble dollar exchange rate and the yen dollar exchange rate doing a cross rate realizing you're going to get uh, less than you want, so you're going to need the low and the low to get a cross rate. You're going to buy, with the ruble, you're going to buy a Russian bond and a CDS. Again, you're going to need to get new CDS rates, new Russian sovereign rates, and then you're going to sell the net bond proceeds forward to receive U.S. dollars. So again, here, uh, we're going to need the forward ruble dollar exchange rate to get back to dollars. For this problem, you'll use none of the exchange rates or interest rates that, or CDS rates that we've done in this PowerPoint. You'll need to go to Bloomberg and get them yourself. And again, with this problem, just show the equation with all the rates used and also uh, write down the exact day and time that you used you uh, obtained the data from Bloomberg. So if you, say, collect the data, the data on Tuesday uh, at 2 o'clock, just tell me that, even though you don't, you maybe do the calculations later. Um, I just need to know when you got the data. Right? All the data needs to be collected at the same time. Otherwise, you you couldn't, say, uh, use a spot price in the, uh, on one currency on Tuesday and then a sovereign rate on Thursday. Uh, so it needs to be all at the same time. So that's the assignment. And uh, this will actually be good practice for an exam, too, all these questions. So good luck.